Hello again and welcome. I thought I'd give you a quick update on this Flute T6. I tried hooking this thing up to a few different sources. One of them was a three-phase, I think around a five horsepower motor. Unfortunately, it didn't have a motor controller on it. I also tried it on a system that was using phase control. That system drew about 30 amps. Uh, this thing didn't have any troubles with either of those. But one of the things people have been asking me about was how this thing worked with the variable frequency drives. So I've got a couple of them at home. This is one of them. This one's made by Mitsubishi. This one's rated for 3.7 kilowatts. I also have a smaller one that I use for a lot of testing. That one's rated for 1.5 kilowatts. These are both three phase 240 volt units. One of the things I may not have explained very well, I had talked about the breakdown voltage of the MOVs. I didn't really go into detail on this GDT because I've covered that before. But I suspect that the breakdown voltage of this GDT is somewhere around 2,000 volts. There's quite a difference between using a MOV and a GDT. Once the GDT fires, it basically becomes a very low impedance source. Where the MOVs will basically just clamp down at whatever their voltage is. So if we have two 800 volt MOVs in series, this is just going to clamp at 1600 volts. So if we're putting 3000 volts across this whole circuit, 1600 of that is going to be across these two MOVs. The GDT is a little different again. Once this thing fires, the voltage drop across it is going to be essentially zero volts. So now that 3000 volts that we're applying is going to be dropped across these two resistors, this unknown network, and then our device out here, which in this case would be a human attached to ground. But as you saw in my previous video, applying even a 5000 volt transient through this meter and then triggering up my half cycle line simulator, I didn't get enough energy in this area to even damage our three LEDs and our 1K ohm resistor. So somebody has asked me about measuring the current while I'm supplying a higher frequency high voltage through this meter. So they had specifically asked about a variable frequency drive. So I've got one here. I've used this for some previous tests. This is a small Omron controller. It's rated for 1.5 kW. One of the phases is attached to this lead here, which is going to go to the high side of the meter. Then I have a ground wire here. This is going off to my BM869S. See it flies right up to 100. Again, retouch the heatsink, and we'll just measure the current through this meter with this VF drive active. I'll go ahead and turn that on. We'll set it to run. You can see it's reading roughly 90 microamps. We don't even have the lead attached yet. So it looks like about 200 microamps. Let's try it in the milliamp range. Looks like about 170 microamps. So that's with the meter off. Let's go ahead and we'll switch it to the voltage mode. And you can see it reads the same current. We'll place it in non contact mode. See the same current. And let's try it in the resistance mode. And it's a little higher, about 475 or so microamps. So what I'm going to do is just place my thumb on the button and let me touch the side of the VF drive. Yeah, I can't really feel anything. Let me try it in the other modes. Yeah, I can't feel anything. Of course, if we take our current probe, place this into voltage, we'll place the Brim into AC plus DC mode, and let's go ahead and touch our button now. So this is looking at the voltage from the output. And you can see we have about a hundred and, oh, well, maybe you can't see. <laughs> and there you can see we have about 
115 or so volt. Of course, again, if I place my finger on that to ground, you can see it dropping down pretty quick. What I'll do is I'll hold the lead on there with the one hand, and then I'm going to short this thing out with my other hand. And there you go, so about 41 volts. Again, if I take my finger off, see it flies right up to 100. Again, retouch the heat sink, there's 35, 36 volts. So off to my left, this is a three phase 220 volt VFD drive. Currently is set for a fundamental frequency of 60 hertz, and this has a carrier frequency of about 15 kilohertz. If we zoom in with the LaCroix, you can see the modulation. So currently I'm not grounded or anything, I'm just sitting in the chair. If I go ahead and touch the side of the controller, you can see it fairly closely matches what the Brahmin's putting out. Again, this is me floating. And here I'm touching the side of the controller. So I'm actually quite surprised that it can read this as well as it does. So here you can see I have a small grounding wire. This is attached with a spring to the small button in the back. This is the test lead going down to the Bryman. We're just going to use that as our pickup wire. Again, we're going to be running this with the ARB. And that comes off to this bus bar over here. We'll be monitoring the output voltage using this Bryman BM869S. So I wrote a LabVIEW application that's going to cycle through several waveforms. We'll program the amplitude of each waveform to 240, 120, and 24 volts. We'll also set the frequency for each waveform to 40 and 80 hertz. I'll also be AM modulating each waveform with a 20% depth. And I'll be using a sine wave with the ninth harmonic of the fundamental frequency.
Let's just manually try a few other waveforms. This is a pure sine wave at 400 hertz with an amplitude of 255 volts. This is the same waveform that's being 40% modulated with a periodic random noise. Let's try dialing that down to 20%. Let's try 10. So somewhere between 10 and 20 percent. So with all the testing that I've done, I'm not too concerned about using the non-contact sensor, at least as far as touching the button and being grounded. Again, it seems to work quite well with just touching the button and not even touching the ground. The one thing that does concern me about this meter is that if the waveform that I'm trying to detect with this non-contact sensor has even a simple spike on it, basically the meter can't pick it up. The reason that I secured the wire with that piece of cork is I didn't want it moving around and corrupting our test. So you could see everything was basically locked in position and all I was doing was cycling through the waveforms and as soon as we got to the waveforms that had those spikes, uh, this thing didn't do very well at all. We also saw it had a lot of problems with that waveform with the ringing on it. I thought it may have had something to do with the zero crossing but you know some of those spikes I'm showing the spike is actually up in the peak so if you go back and look at those waveforms you'll see here's the sine wave and I'll put a little peak like here or I'll just put it on half of the cycle I may have it go positive I may have it go negative you know so I was just running different combinations of that and even these little humps here were causing this meter to have troubles you know again it's quite surprising I'd say however they're doing this non-contact detection this needs to be a lot more robust. I'm just surprised that it misses such simple waveforms as this. Well, that's going to be all for now. Till the next video. Later.